Hello and welcome to CSIT 206. Today we'll be talking about some common programming techniques. Okay, so we'll be learning how to pass a value to a script using a hidden form element. We'll also look at how to pass value to script in the URL. We would also implement a confirmation process for deleting records. We would also use a sticky form to edit existing records. Then we'll look at pagination query results and then how to change the sorting of query results. Okay, so to send values to a script using the hidden uh, form, then we are going to use the hidden input. Here, the type of the input is going to be hidden. Then you are going to pass in the name. Is the name that we are going to use to access this variable when we get to the script. That's the PHP script. The value is the value you also want to pass to that script. So to pass values from one script to the other, we can use the hidden input. Now, this is how it would look like. We have www.example.com forward slash page dot PHP. Now, the question mark tells us that we are passing some variable to the page. Now, this variable is, would be called do, and the value would be this. So there are two ways. We could either use an input hidden field, or then we can just use a get method. And then the get method is where we pass the variable through the URL. Now, when we send values to a script, then we are able to process. So the snippet of code you see now, here we are trying to send some value to the script. Here we are trying to implement an edit user and then a delete user. To edit a user, we are trying to use the user's ID. So in our script, we are passing the user ID, and that's what we are accessing using the row variable. So you can see there we have the h uh, ref value being edit underscore user dot php question mark id equals and then is followed by the variable row okay here we are also trying to delete and this is the variable we are using to delete then we can proceed to pass some parameters so in a case where we just want to delete a user let's say that his first name is paul then when we pass Paul here, it's going to show up on the form as Paul. Then we can follow these links, which is either the edit one or the delete one to perform that action. So this is how it would look like if we execute such a script. We have here the edit link. We also have the delete link. And then the last name, the first name, and also the date that we passed. So with a form like this, you can either click on edit or on delete. Now, when this gets to the scripts, we are going to now be able to access this user based on the user ID we have passed here. And this is how it would look like. Now, this is how it works with the hidden form. When a form is submitted, we are getting it, when, that, when we use a post method, we are going to receive that in the post variable. Now, we already seen that the post variable contains all fields that are passed to the scripts using the post method in the form. If we used a get, then we would also receive that from the get super global variable in PHP. Now we can use the hidden form in a case where we want to, like we've seen before, delete a user. Now if we also want to confirm that you actually want to delete this user, then that means that we need to hold the record of that user ID. So in this case, you see that here we are passing delete user and the method is post. And then we have a hidden field. And that hidden field is containing the user ID of the user we want to delete. In this case, it's 10. So upon submission, if it's yes, then we can pick this hidden value and then proceed to delete that user. The next things we want to look at is editing existing records. Here we'll be making use of what we call sticky forms. We'll also be using hidden inputs. We'll also be validating the form data and we'll be executing the simple queries. Now, when we talk about sticky inputs, we are talking about inputs that keep displaying data uh, as and when forms are submitted. So let's say that this is the edit form. You realize that this form is pre-populated with the data already in store. 
So the first name of the user is Richard. The last name we also have that there, and then the email address. Now, upon submission on this form, if we edit this user detail, then we'd want to reprint the edited one so that we'll know that, okay, this was the previous values, and now this is the new value. In a case where we want to paginate some list or data, let's say that we have a table containing 1,000 rows, but we can't show all 1,000 at a time on the page. So we want to do what is called pagination. That means we want to pick whether it's going to be 20 at a time, or 30, or 50, or 100. This is going to be based on our logic. In this case, that means that when we proceed to the next page, we should be able to tell where we ended in the previous page and continue from there. Now, how do we do this? Here is a code snippet that will explain how this is done. Here we have a variable called display, which holds the value of 10. That means that per every page, we are planning to display just 10 records. So what we do here is that we are checking if it's set a get variable. Now this get variable, like we said, is going to be passed in the URL. That means that our URL would have a question mark appended to it. And after the question mark, there's going to be a variable named P, which is going to be equal to a certain value. Now this value is supposed to be numeric. So here we are doing some validation. And what we are doing is that we are checking if it sets this P, and the P represents the page on which we currently are, and whether it's numeric. So then, if it's numeric, then we are grabbing that value, and we are inserting it into pages. If it's not, then we would have to display an error message. Now, what we are proceeding to do here is that, based on that value, we are now going to query our SQL. And we are going to query our database, and then from there, we'll be able to tell where we've gotten to. Now, this is the uh, SQL we are going to use. Here, it reads select count user ID from users. So here, we are counting the number of users we have in our users, uh, users table. Then from there, we are going to use the records display to now loop through and display that record. Now, we are going to look at how we calculate the stat of such pagination. Now, if it's set S, which is numeric, then S is going to be our starting point. Else, we are going to say that stat is zero. So here, the logic will be that if somebody comes to this page uh, in the beginning, then maybe stat might not be set. So then stat is going to be zero. But if stat is set, then that means that the person has visited the first page and is proceeding to another page then we continue to query here we are selecting the last name the first name we are formatting the registration date and then also we are starting from start and ending at display now bear in mind that display from our previous slide holds a value of 10. so that means that if our start is zero then we are starting from zero and we are ending at 10. so this is going to fetch us 10 records so this would be how it would, the result that would be returned to us if we execute the select count user ID from users. In this case, then our users has uh, 10 rows in that table. And this is how we want the pagination to look like. So when we hover over previous, you can re realize from the bottom that what we have there has a question mark, which is saying that S equals zero and P equals three. That means that our S which is our starting point is going to be zero and the limit of that is going to be three. Then this would be what will be displayed. So here we realize that we have some number of rows being displayed and then our pagination shows up here. We have the first row, the second row, the third row, and then next. And this would also be how we would view when we move to another page. In a case where we want to sort data, it will be wise for us to rather use variables that would tell us what sort of SQL we should append to that SQL that we'll be using to fetch the data. So here, if we have LN, then we are saying that we want to sort by last name. This would mean that there's going to be a get variable, which is called sort, which would be equal to one of these parameters, either LN, FN, RN. 
Now, if it's LN, it means that we want to sort by last name, and the order would be ascending. If it's FN, then it means that we want to sort by first name, and then the order will also be ascending. If it's RD, then we want to sort by registration date. Now, if none has been set, then we are saying that, okay, let's just order by registration date. Now, this, would, this is how the full SQL is going to look like. So now we are going to have select last name, first name, uh, the registration date, and then, uh, and then user ID from users, order by, S, uh, order by. Now, this variable order by is what we saw in the previous slide. What this is holding is the order in which we want to order this SQL. And then our limit, then the start, and then display. We said that the start is going to tell us our starting point, and then display the end point. Okay. So this is how we are actually going to query the database if we want to perform pagination. See you in the next slide.